Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan here on a Hot Take. Hot Take, and I'm going to talk to you today about why you should stay the F in your house. Uh, this has really infuriated me and I have to talk about it. So, before I tell you my story, I have, to, I have a minor confession to make. Now, I am freelance, but sometimes freelancing gets a little... Uh, tight, shall we say, um, the recent New Jersey law that almost banned freelancing in New Jersey kind of killed work for me for a while. It didn't totally kill it, but it really, it really slowed things down. So I took a day job to sort of make ends meet. Uh, everybody's getting laid off, so I've been laid off. And uh, um, I don't want to say the place. I don't have a problem with it. I just, you know, I, I'll keep that on the down low. But the reason I mention it is because there were still customers coming into the place and I was shocked. I thought we would have closed a week ago, um, but uh, apparently, you know, people still were not heeding the warning. Now, the place I worked, it's not an essential retail business um, on the list in New Jersey, so and it's not an entertainment thing. But we had a customer come in, and I, it was a couple, a young couple, and a baby. Which I was just flabbergasted that any young couple would bring their baby out when this virus is going on. And you might say, well, maybe they needed to come. Maybe they had to go buy this thing that you sell. This is what the woman said to the salesman, because I could overhear it. She said, oh, we're just looking around you know, we've been cooped up and we just wanted to get out of the house. I wanted to slap that woman. I really did. Because how stupid, and her husband too, how stupid do you have to be to risk your your child uh, during this crisis? Now, you might say, well, it's a baby. Uh, they're very resistant. Thing is, babies with babies, uh, you know, babies are new. And a lot of times you don't know what kind of medical problems they will have. That baby could have some sort of immune deficiency that hasn't been discovered yet. Uh, and I don't mean discovered as in science. I mean discovered on her person. And the coronavirus could, could literally kill that baby. So I felt that was the most supremely stupid people I saw today. Uh, that they would bring their baby out in the virus world. Terrible. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Coming in at a close second was the elderly couple who also came into the place of business. Um, they had to be driven in by shuttle because they're both on walkers. And the driver said to me, he overheard them talking, that one of their caregivers got the coronavirus. And I was flabbergasted yet again and avoided the driver and everybody connected to him and the, the elderly couple uh, because they've been exposed uh, and they, they could get it and they could die. It was a very real chance that these, these, ve these two very old people could die from being exposed to the coronavirus and they're out and about. Do, 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 do. Supremely selfish people. It just goes to show you uh, with age, sometimes wisdom doesn't come. Um, so it really just pissed me off, those people, that they would just risk their, the, the, their health, the health of other people, and they just don't care. So that's why you should stay in your house. Um, another thing I saw today on the way home from work today, and I literally just got laid off today, was a group of about eight teenagers just running amok down the street. Look. This virus is not going to last forever, but you get a group of eight teenagers. Um, they could be, one of them could, could have it and be totally, feel totally fine. And that could spread to all eight of their houses. Uh, their parents could get it. Their grandparents could get it. Their grandparents are in real danger. And 20% of the people who do get this will be in the hospital on a ventilator for some time. Assuming we don't run out of ventilators. 
So, and by the way, the people who are on ventilators, it doesn't matter to their age. They've been like, the youngest so far has been five years old who got it. That five-year-old, I believe, is still alive, but they're on a ventilator and that ain't good. Ain't good. You could get permanent lung damage. So if you are a selfish idiot and you keep going out of your house, you got to ask yourself, do you really, uh, do you have a brain in your head? Stop going out. You know, at this point, you should have enough food to last you a few weeks. And if you don't, I don't know what to tell you because you're an idiot. Uh, uh, now, you might be broke and you might be in a real dire circumstances, in which case, I don't know why you're watching YouTube videos, but you need to get some food and hunker down because we're in a crisis here. And spreading the disease is just going to make it worse. It's going to be really tough to squash this. And it's going to be even tougher by these idiots who just really, they just haven't gotten the memo. And they just have it. And what that's going to lead to is a hard quarantine. What that's going to lead to are cops and National Guardsmen on the streets screaming at people, get back in your effing house. Okay? And believe me, you don't want to be arrested by some of those guys. Because some of them may be infected. They, they could end up detaining you in a place where you might be detained with other infected people. Who knows? But don't bring that on. We don't want that. So if you're out for frivolous reasons, you really have to reevaluate yourself here. Look, if you got enough food, you should be inventorying your food. Look at it and say, do I have enough food to last a few weeks? If the answer is yes, you know, and, and you can't count things like, well, I might run out of that mustard I like, so I might have to go to the store for that. F the mustard, okay? You're gonna, you could do it without your fancy mustard. You could do without, you know, I'm doing, I'm running out of cheese. I love cheese. I eat cheese almost every day. I'm gonna run out. I'm just gonna do without cheese for a while. Uh, I'm gonna do without a lot of things. I'm starting to run out of things. Um, I'm, I'm out of bread. I'm down to tortillas because they keep longer. I'm really getting sick of tortillas and I've only been eating them two days. I might bake myself some bread, but beyond that, you have to make sacrifices. And those are pretty minor sacrifices, but I guarantee you, people watching this video right now are saying, ah, it's no big deal, I'll go get some mustard, ah, it's not gonna be that bad. No, you have to limit your exposure. And the main way to limit your exposure is to stay home. It's only gonna take one time, one time, and you'll get it. Now, I'm not talking about dying. Most people won't die. But there's a 20% chance you end up in the hospital on a ventilator for like a week or two. Now think about how uncomfortable that is. Think about how uncomfortable it'll be with you in the hospital, jammed in a room with 30 or 40 other patients, <laughs> sitting on the bread, just breathing, just struggling to breathe, getting drugs, smelling the smells that hospitals have, being bored out of your mind, being sick and feeling awful and just being there for weeks. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm trying to make you avoid? Don't go out. The second worst case scenario is somebody in your family has to go to the hospital because you brought it into the house. Now, you have to go visit them. And even though you are either have already been sick and now you're kind of immune, or you haven't been sick yet, you A, might not get to visit them at all because it's gonna be crazy and quarantine, or B, if you do visit them, you could definitely end up getting sick because you're gonna be in the hospital with other sickies. So, it's a no-win situation. The best you could hope for is that you stay at home, get plenty of sleep and rest, get caught up on the internet, get caught up on Netflix, play video games, play board games. You'll be bored out of your mind after a few days. You'll be cooped up, stir crazy, whatever. Just deal, just deal with it. I don't be like these idiots. 
It's infuriating to see. Now, you might say, but oh, Tony, you live alone. You don't have to deal with the people you live with. That's a choice you made. I, I, I can't get into that. Uh, you, you're living with whoever you're living with. You made that call. Uh, I'm living with my dog and I'm very happy with her. So, <laughs> you know, that's just the way it is. That's just, you know, if had this been like four or five years ago, I would have been stuck here with my ex. It probably would have been a nightmare, but that's not the case. Wind the clock, clock back, oh, I don't know, 20 years ago, I probably would have been at my parents. Would have been stuck with them. Probably not an ideal situation either. We wouldn't have been driving each other crazy. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages to being alone. I like being alone. Um, it's nice. I can get lots of projects done. But, you know, when you want to play cards or talk to someone, you kind of out of luck and got to go on the internet. So, you need to stay at home. <laughs> Let me give you some strategies in case you're running out of food or in case you're running out of money or whatever. Because I, I am used to being poor and frugal. So, uh, perhaps some of these tips might be useful for you. First tip is, you got a lot of time on your hands. Um, if you got some flour and some yeast, you can make your own bread. Because you're going to run out of bread, like I did, and I'm going to have to make some. Um, it's not that hard, and homemade bread tastes really, really good. So, if you got the ingredients, you're in luck. If you don't have all the ingredients, uh, check online. There's usually some substitute you can throw in there and get some kind of bread going as long as you got flour. Um, another thing you could do is, as I said before, is order on Amazon. Now, Amazon's really backed up. I'm going to place some orders tonight. I'm getting an order today. I probably won't get the order I'm placing now until like the end of the month, if I'm lucky. But the thing is, I don't know what my food situation is going to be by the end of the month. I could really be low on food by then. Um, I mean, I think I got a good month's worth, but I didn't plan for every scenario. I mean, I just bought a bunch of random crap, basically, in a can. I think I'm going to be okay, but after a time, I'm probably going to get a little nuts in terms of my choices aren't going to be spectacular. But I'm going to live with that. And I'm going to deal with that. I'm not going to go crazy and go, well, I'm just going to go out for a loaf of bread. No, I'm going to stay in. As much as I love bread, as much as I love sushi, I'm not going out. Um, you know, if, you, if you're out of salad dressing, plenty of recipes online. It's a recipe for almost everything. But the only thing you can't make is cheese. I mean, you can, but it isn't quick. And you got to need milk and a bunch of other stuff that I don't... I don't buy milk, so I'm out of luck with the cheese. But there are plenty of stuff you can make. And if you can't make it, you're just going to have to do without. Don't be afraid to eat anything that gets a little old. Just because the expiration date is there and you're a day or two past it doesn't necessarily mean it's gone bad. Now with milk, it tends to be kind of on the money. After a few days, it's going to start to smell. But, you know, something like... I don't know, tasty cakes? Oh, they last forever. It's just that, you know, after the expiration date, eh, the taste might start to decline. Um, if you do have to go out, you better have a damn good reason. I, I think the only acceptable uh, excuses for going out at this point is, number one, you got to go to the doctor because you're sick. Or someone is sick and you got to go to get them drugs or whatever. Uh, number two is you're completely out of food. Now, I know that at some point, possibly by the end of this month, I'll be down to almost nothing but pasta. <laughs> uh, which will suck, but I'll deal with it. If I have to eat a pound of pasta just to get through the day, that's what I'm going to do. Um, you know, I it, it might not be great. I, I might be eating it and going, oh, God, I wish I'd gotten more meat. But um, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what you should do, too. I mean, just because you're stuck in the house and all you got left to eat is pasta or rice or a can of beans or whatever, just eat it. Just eat it. 
be happy you have some food left and stay home. Now, it might make you a little irritable, whatever. Get caught up on your sleep. Get caught up on your binge watching. Get caught up on your reading. Read Woka Stan a novel or perhaps The Pineys at Amazon.com. But there's plenty of things you could do other than go out of the house. And I hate to keep this lecture going on and on, but it just really infuriated me that people could be so selfish at this time. You've got to stay home. Thank you.